Hi, I'm Raval. Welcome to the Scrum training video series. This is part one, what is Scrum? So just a little introduction here to the Scrum training series. We're going to be covering various topics and pretty much I'm going to be explaining in great detail how you can apply Scrum to your team. So what is Scrum? Scrum is a set of rules for teams to follow while developing a product. It is known as a management framework for incremental product development. You can adapt Scrum to your team. So even though it is a set of rules, it can be molded to fit your environment. Going down a waterfall. To understand the benefits of Scrum, you'll need to understand the waterfall method. Waterfall development depends on a perfect understanding of the products or features requirements from the outset. There are a set amount of phases where work is completed and handed off to the next phase and there's no room for any mistakes. A lot of development teams tend to fall into this method without realizing it. So here's a little diagram showing exactly how the waterfall method works. It starts off with gathering requirements in a, a meeting with a client. And you know, once you get those requirements, whether it's features or how they would like the website to look, it then is got passed to the developer, the de uh, sorry, the designer. The designer will then create a really nice, whatever it is, a home page or the design all the features of the website. It'll then, once that's done, it'll go to the implementation. So the developers will code the designs and code the features. It'll then move on to Q the QA team or the testing team where they will verify the code. They will verify and make sure that all the features work the way they are supposed to according to the requirements that were gathered originally. Um, once that's done and it's approved, it'll go on to either a maintenance stage after deployment or you know we'll show the client um, if it's an external product. Now the problem with this, like I mentioned, is that once it goes to verification or once it goes to the client, the client's going to take a look at it for the first time. So they may see the product and be like, well, you know, we did say we wanted red as a background, but actually now we prefer green. So that is just the most basic change, but you know, it can go on to their features not working the way I want it to work. I want it working in a completely different way. That's what I said in the beginning, you know, even if they didn't, things can go really wrong with this method. So I think this, um, this little cartoon strip here pretty much sums up waterfall perfectly. You can't really predict what the client's going to do or, or what's going to happen in the project in the, in the coming months. You can work on something. It may not work for what the client actually wants it to. They, there's just so many things that can go wrong. And, you know, by the time it comes to showing the client, it's usually a few days before launch. And there's not much else you can do at this stage. It's just going to be either pushed back or the client's going to be like, you know what, launch it now and just leave it as a botch job. So now we move on to Scrum. So how does Scrum work? Scrum utilizes each step from the waterfall method. Now don't worry, it's done much better than the waterfall method. The key difference here is the word iterative. All the phases described in the waterfall method are mixed into something called a sprint. So what are sprints? Sprints are defined as fixed length iterations. Each sprint contains a phase from the waterfall method. The team works to produce a working, tested, shippable product increment each sprint. At the end of the sprint, work is demonstrated. Clients often need to see the incorrect version of their product before understanding what they actually want. So this diagram shows you how sprints and scrum development works. So what really happens is that 
like I said, this word iterative, it's an iter iterative process. So in the beginning, we gather and plan exactly what's going to happen. So or whatever feature we're working on, we get the requirements, we design, build, test, review and launch. So what we're doing here is we're picking and choosing the most important features that the client wants and we are building them first. So in Sprint 1, it could be like, okay, we definitely want authentication, like a login system. We definitely want that built first. This is how we want it built. You know, we go through the first sprint, you can build the login system and then show the client and the client can then give feedback and say, well, we don't want it done like this. Or, you know, they stuff can be reviewed quickly and easier. Then we can either take care of it the next sprint or build the next feature. So here's a real world example of waterfall versus agile. So I worked on a project for a client. It was it was a very large project and the client came into the first meeting and they knew exactly what they wanted. They had detailed notes. They've been to other places. They have spoken to people. They were the experts in their field. All they wanted was, look, we just need you to build it. Here's everything. So we were, th we were like, great, these guys know what they're doing, we're going to build it. Um, the client wanted constant meetings to review the product, which was, it sounded like a good thing at first, but we were following the waterfall approach. So whenever we did meet the client, the client wanted to add new features, they weren't happy with the current features, they wanted to change design, it was a nightmare. So the company was following the waterfall method, which meant that, okay, the design work was already done by the first meeting. So by the time we had that first meeting, the designer had moved on to other projects, their workload had increased, and now this client wanted more uh, features or changes, and it was just absolute chaos. There was just no time to do these changes. And by the time it came to launch, because every meeting they wanted more or they wanted to change stuff, we didn't hit the deadline, the project went over budget, and it was just a complete nightmare. If we are working with the Agile Scrum method, it would have solved so many issues. At the first thing that would have happened is at least we would have had a MVP for launch. Now MVP stands for minimal viable product and at, at the time of launch they just had they had a product that w wasn't really a working product. Stuff was half done, stuff was being changed, it was just a complete mess but with Agile with picking and choosing features to especially the most important ones first at least we would have had the most important things done and we could have launched with the minimal version of the product that they wanted. So thanks for watching guys. Just remember this was part one. Look out for the next videos in this series. We will be explaining exactly how to use Scrum for your development work. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below.